Hey, howdy, hey, welcome to you, welcome back to my channel. Uh, for today's video, I'm going to be going over some predictions I have for RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 9. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below what you think about these predictions, and hit that subscribe button, become part of the Sam and Trier community. Ding! You can also follow me on my other social media platforms at Sam and Hour on all platforms. Um, before we do get into this, uh, do not send hate to any of the queens mentioned in this video, because that's not what these are meant for. These are meant for us to have a fun time here on the side of the interwebs, talk about all things Drag Race, and just have a cute little kiki. So, again, All Stars 9 is premiering tomorrow. I will be reviewing it tomorrow, so, um, be on the lookout for that. But before it, we get to the premiere tomorrow, I figured now would be a better time than ever to kind of make some predictions as far as how I think each of the queens might do in this season. Again, um, we have eight queens. It is a non-elimination season, and they're playing for charity. So, it's me a cute little season. I'm excited. It's me a lot of fun to watch and review for you all. But, we're... A day away. Less than a day away. So now it feels like a really good time to go ahead and make some predictions for y'all about how I see this All-Star season playing out. Again, like I said, it is a non-elimination, so there's no... We're not going to see anyone going home, right? And I imagine it's probably going to be a similar format to the all winner season. Um, so, I'll be curious to see how this <coughs> plays out tomorrow. Start tomorrow. Yes. So, let's get into it. Alright. So, I'm going to go over each of the Queen's promos, and I'm going to use that as a way to, like, reference them. Again, just make my life a little bit easier, and keep it moving. Up first, we have Angeria Paris Van Michaels. All right, when it comes to Angie, um, she did so well during season 14, obviously winning the first two challenges of the season, and then kind of, I feel like she took a little bit of a backseat for the rest of the season, unfortunately. The production wasn't featuring her as much as I think they should have. Um, so I feel like Angie, is if she's coming back, she's going to want to come back fully put together, right? Like, she's a pageant girl. She's going to be one of the girls who's like, all right, so this is what I did last time. How can I look at back at what I did, improve it, and come back even stronger? Like, that's what I'm getting from Angie. So I wouldn't, I, I don't see her coming back unless she's, like, fully confident in what she's going to be presenting. And I see her making it very far in this season. Um, I mean, no one's going home. But... I see her placing very high this season. Like, that's my fantasy. Um, I could see her taking the crown, honestly. She is, in my brain, one of the contenders for the crown. Again, she was a fin finalist for season 14. So she has a big name to hold up to. Big reputation to hold up to. But I also feel like Angie is going to do well. Like, I, I don't see a world where Angie doesn't do well. She's going to do well in the acting challenges. She's funny. She's going to do well in the design challenges. She'll do well. She'll do well in the performance. I think she's going to come back fully realized and kind of be a bit of a, like, good at all things. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, somewhat jack of all trades. That's the word I'm looking for. Of drag. That's kind of what I'm getting from this. I think she's going to come back. These are my predictions. I think she's going to come back fully realized, fully evolved. And just slay. Like, I think Angie's gonna slay. Period. Like, I'd be shocked if Angie didn't slay. Next up, we have Got Meek. So, Got Meek, um, obviously was very funny on their original season. Um, I think Mick is kind of an underrated comedy queen. Because if you think about it, Mick won. She won both of her Snatch. She won Snatch Game. She won the Roast. Or did she? Wait, no, she didn't win the roast. She could have won the roast. But also had the fashion. Like, Mick is coming back with the fashion and the comedy. And also, Mick has been working with Violet a lot. So, she's bringing back some, a lot more um, experience, a lot more 
knowledge knowledge um i don't know i really don't know make is a little bit more of a wild card for me um because there are some really fierce competitors on this season not to say that mick didn't do well on her original season but like i mm, i don't know i don't know i i'm a mick is a more of a wild card for me in terms of this season She'll do well on the runway. She'll do well with the um, comedy challenges. So she has those two things down very well. Um, So I could see her doing well with those and a lot of other challenges too. But still, I feel a little bit of a wild card as compared to like a queen like Angie, who I think has kind of more evolved herself. Not to say that Mick hasn't, but like Angie's... You, you know what I'm trying to say? Like I see Angie... Doing very well. Georges. Um, I don't know. Georges has been performing a lot. Obviously, she was in Vegas for a long time. She did uh, Work the World. So, she's done a lot of performance and touring and doing all of that. Um, I don't know if she's necessarily put taking comedy classes or improv classes. And I don't necessarily know how well she'll do in those. Um, and also when it comes to runway, I don't necessarily think she'll do as well in the design challenges. I know she won a design challenge in season 14, but I don't see her winning a design challenge this season, personally. I mean, you have queens like Roxy Andrews, like, no shade to Georges, but she's not going to be Roxy Andrews in a design challenge. For me, for me. Um, I do think this was a quick turnaround for Georges. I don't know why in my brain, the way I look at it is Angie has more, had more experience going into season 14 from Jump, right? So Angie has that experience to hone in on her own skills and to fully develop herself. So she's going to be more, a, I think, have a better perspective to look back at her performance on season 14, where Georges, I feel like, is a little bit newer into the scene, so she might not have as much experience in terms of taking the critique and honing in on herself. For me, I love Georges. I, I don't know how far she'll... I don't know how well she'll do. No shade. I'm looking forward to seeing Georges perform. I'm looking forward to seeing her runways. I do don't think she's going to do well in comedy, personally. Um, I'd love to see her come back and have a redemption for the comedy, but I don't see that. I, I feel bad saying that. I really don't, though. Um, I hope she'll win some challenges, though, because I want to see her lip sync, because she is such a fierce lip syncer. So, we'll see with Georges. Again, I'm going to have to put the pin in that for a little bit. Um, but... I don't necessarily see her making it as far as some of the other queens. All right, next up, we have Nina West. So, Nina has been doing um, Hairspray for two years, I think she said. She um, has the comedy. The looks, I don't see much growth from what I've seen. Again, I don't follow her on social media, so I'm not like, super immersed into the Nina West fantasy of it all. Um, I don't know. Nina, I, I, I don't see her as a winner. No shade. No shade at all. I don't see Nina as a winner of the season. I think this was a great opportunity for Nina to, to come back, but I don't see her winning this season. I don't know. Maybe I'll be shocked. Maybe Nina's going to win this season. Who knows? But these are my initial predictions. Next up, we have Plastique Tiara. Plastique is another wild card for me. Because, again, when she first got on season 11, she was very new to drag. And she was very pretty. But I, she did not do well in the comedy. She didn't really do well in terms of knowing her own brand and knowing her own... knowing. In a way, I feel like she didn't really know herself. Maybe I'm getting too, like, wishy-washy with that. I don't know. But I do feel like 
Plastique has put in a lot of work, and I do feel like Plastique has a much more defined brand now, especially if you go to her social medias and her TikTok. She knows what will do well, and she knows how to present herself to the best of her abilities. So again, I think she'll do well in the runways. I think she'll do well in... I don't know. I really don't know. Plastique, I, I haven't seen her perform. Um... I don't know if she's going to necessarily be funny. Because, again, being on social media doesn't necessarily make you a funny queen. No shade. But, like, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't necessarily think comedy is going to be her strength. Even now. I hope she's put in the work. I hope she's come back fully realized. I I don't know. I think, that, I think production has won Plastique for a very long time. And I think the only way Plastique would have come back would be for a non-elimination season. Because she doesn't want to ruin her brand. She doesn't want to ruin the name that she's developed for herself by potentially going home on an elimination season. So I think this would is, is a really good opportunity for Plastique to come back and kind of like show us what she's done and where she is. But I don't necessarily see her taking the crown either. For me. Let me know what you think. I, I'm excited to see her runways. I'm very excited for her runways, but I don't see her taking the crown. Next up, we have Roxy Andrews. Again, Roxy has been doing drag for a very long time. She is a continental title holder. She, I, <clears throat> Roxy was competing on season five with some of the fiercest competitors. Jinx, Alaska, Detox, Ivy Winters, and many others. So I feel like, wait, was Ivy season six or five? No, Ivy was five. Ivy was five. And then you have All Stars 2 with fierce competitors as well. Katya, Alaska, Detox. Like, Roxy is coming back in, I think, a better opportunity for Roxy to take the crown. Um, For me, Roxy is one of my front runners. Maybe I'm a bit biased because I love Roxy Andrews. But I see her as a front runner already. Again, Roxy knows how to put together a look. The th- humor, I don't know. I don't know how well she'll do in comedy and things like that. But the looks are going to be great. The performances are going to be phenomenal. She's going to slay. I see Roxy as a potential crown holder as well. Again, I just love Roxy Andrews. So, like, it is what it is. Chanel. Um, Chanel's another queen that's been a very long time since she competed. She was on season one of RuPaul's Drag Race and then All Stars one, and now is coming back to compete again. Um, I think her looks are going to be fun. I think her performance is going to be great. I do wonder how much her own. How do I put this? Drag Race doesn't necessarily reward people who are super confident all the time. I think that's a fair way to put it. So I don't know if Chanel is going to get in her own way. And that's the one thing I worry about with Chanel. I think she could potentially get in her own way about everything. Um, yeah. I, I, Chanel is another one I don't necessarily see taking the crown. But I'm very excited to see her come back and compete. Again, it's been a very long time since we have seen Chanel on Drag Race. So, like, this makes sense. I'm very excited for Chanel. But, again, I don't necessarily see her going for the crown. No shit. Next up, we have Vanessa Vanjie Mateo. Obviously, Vanjie was on Season 10. Went out first. Season 11 made it to Top 5. Has been doing so much. Since RuPaul's Drag Race, she was on Jersey Shore. She had Vanjie's 24 Hours of Love. She was on Drag Race Live. She's been putting in the work. Vanjie has been on television for a very long time. So she knows what the camera wants. She knows what production wants. She knows what she needs to present to do well. Vanjie's another one I I could see doing well. I... I don't necessarily see her taking the crown just because we have other competitors like 
Van like Angie and Roxy. But I do enjoy the queen and I love Vanjie. I think she'll make it pretty far. Um, but I don't know. She's more of a fun personality. I don't necessarily know if she's going to take the crown. Yeah. And then obviously for ball. So, in, in conclusion. In conclusion. The sandwich or our predictions. I see the top two. If there is a top two being Roxy and Angie. Like, that's just my fantasy. That's my brain. That's how I see it playing out. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what's going to play out in the end. Um, in terms of a winner, I'd be happy with either one of them. Like, I love Roxy and I love Angie. So, like, either one of them winning this season, I'd be thrilled. Um, I'm just excited and in general for the season to premiere. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch and review for you all. And I can't wait to talk to you all about this season and this show and all of the above. Um, tomorrow is the premiere. I will be reviewing episode one tomorrow on the Sandwich Hour channel. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm excited. It's been a lot of fun. Again, I wanted to put out my own cute little production video in terms of how I see it playing out before the season premieres. I'm very excited to watch it with you all and talk about all things Drag Race. Um, it's going to be a fun season. Sorry, sorry. Long day. Um, and I'm excited. Let me know what you think about all this down below in the comment section. Make sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Become part of the Sandwich Hour channel. You can also follow me on my other social media platforms at Sandwich Hour on all platforms. Have a good rest of your night or day wherever you are. And I will be back here tomorrow with my Drag Race All-Star Season 9 review. Bye, y'all. Have a good rest of your night. Whoop. There it is. 